All right, it is time to introduce our next assignment, which you can look at in our Canvas course under Assignment Sheets. So Assignment 2 is another compositing exercise, but it's different because we're using a figurative, we're making a figurative element, not a background, not something that extends in our imagination, but something that's completely contained from head to toe. And so we are going to create a creature, a fantasy creature, out of at least five separate references. This creature has to be in full resolution to be printed well, um, up to 13 by 19 inches, but at least 8 by 10 inches, and at least 300 pixels per inch. So again, that, that's going to mean um, reference that's probably 8 megapixels or larger. And the idea is to base it on um, an idea you have before you even look for reference. So you know what kind of reference to look at. So I'm going to introduce it by using this Pokédex. Why do you spell Pokemon wrong? Say my Pokemon. Pokemon. So that's just, that's just the name of this database. Why is it spelled Pokemon? So. You spell one right and one wrong. In the same sense. Why not call them Digimon? Pokemon. Pokemon. May we continue? <laughs> All right. So, I saw the typo. What's nice about this this website, whether you like its its name or not, it's not one that I maintain, but it has the largest, easiest to access collection of Pokemon designs. Right now, I like that they're so small because what I want you to do is just scroll through it. I don't need you to have any specialized knowledge of these, and what we're looking at are the silhouettes. The overall shape of them. They're all looking one direction. What's hmm. over there? <laughs> now, what I want you to do is when you look at them, you kind of think, what kind of shape would I be interested in? What kind of interest do I have? And I am interested in something that is maybe flying. Uh, I like kind of the 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 horizontal shape, more of a wingspan. So I'm going to use this one. Okay. So you pick one, and it will show you two different pictures, right? So this is a picture I'm going to drag and drop to my desktop. And then I'm going to go back, and I'm also going to drag and drop the thumbnail picture, which is really tiny. So I have to... Ah, there's a few ways I can get it. I can do a screen grab of it. Command Shift Four. Grab around it, and it will show up on my desktop. So I have two shots of this creature. Notice, unlike a landscape, when you do creature design, you have to design it to move, right? So this creature looks very takes up very different amount of space. And yet there are certain things that are similar. Okay, now I want you to take the one you like most. And I'm actually liking this, this image most because it has the most interesting shape. I want you to go to Tools and Preview and adjust the color and turn it using Exposure and Contrast. Try to turn it into a silhouette. where it's just a black shape on white. I don't know why that's so difficult. Usually it's easy. And I have to desaturate. So that basically you can just see the silhouette pretty clearly. There we go. You're doing this in preview using a just color. It's just like using levels in Photoshop. So it's once you've saved your image to the to the desktop, just double click it, it will open up in preview, and then you go to tools, adjust color. Okay, now before I close it, I want to say 
uh, export export it and put the name black in the title because you've kind of blacked it out. It's like making a, a dark photocopy of it. It doesn't matter if it's large or small, right? So I want you to look at that. <laughs> Let me show you the same thing for this really small one. In character design, we call this the silhouette. So I'll show you with this one. Once it's opened in preview, you go to window. We go to window, adjust color. So you get the, the color <coughs> options, just like you would do levels as an adjustment in Photoshop. Then what you can do is play with the level slider. I want you to basically darken the darks, darken the midtones because they're all on white. And then take the saturation all the way down until it's as close to a, a silhouette as you can get. You can play with exposure level. Now we're looking at two different silhouettes. And I'm going to export this. with a different name. Okay. So now these are going to be what you reference in your sketchbook. You find the Pokemon you're interested in, but you're not trying to match the Pokemon. You're trying to be inspired by their silhouette. And then this is what you sketch. So I've opened up a Photoshop file. I'm going to move these different silhouette references because we are not trying to copy or in infringe on the intellectual property at all of Pokemon. We don't want that. Instead, what we want to do is try to understand the skeletal structure. So what am I responding to with this creature? I'm responding to a head that's based of a cranium and a beak. So I'm going to kind of draw that, but it's a shorter beak. It's kind of squared off. Okay. Then, so I draw the circle for the cranium. Then I need a neck and a spine. So this silhouette shows me how long the neck is, and how long the spine is. And then it flows through, in this case, to a tail. Doesn't matter if the tail's going like that, or if the tail's curving behind. I want to find out how long the neck is, and then where does the rib cage start? So I'm looking at a rib cage starting about here. You darken it up. And then I'm looking at hips that start about here. Then I'm looking at legs that come out with a very short femur and then a longer fibia and tibia and then kind of bigger shapes for the feet, whether they're coming out towards me or really hunched in. I want to kind of understand how those feet are positioned. And I can move it into my own position that I think is interesting. But then the, the star, the eye position is kind of about here. So the star of this are the wings. And maybe I want to make my wings span a little bit bigger. But already this looks like kind of almost a lizard or a Komodo dragon or something in its skeletal structure. Very different than a bird. And now with the, the wings, they're a little bit more complicated than arms, but they have the upper arm, the radius and ulna, and then the finger bones. But in wings, the finger bones are spread out more like so. So this is what's called a skeletal template. And you need to understand how the skeletal structure of your fantasy creature is going to work before you can build anything that is going to be able to move, right? So these are my components. And I kind of like this tail the most. Notice this is not based on detail. It's not based on, well, there's ruffles here and claws, but I do kind of like the claws. So 
I might say, well, the claws are going to come out right here. And I can make notes, just like with our landscape sketch. So maybe these are bare claws. And I start thinking, OK, what kind of reference might help? What kind of head does this remind me of? What kind of beak? Do I need a beak? Maybe I have a lizard's head, right? So maybe uh, this is a lizard. Let's see. The texture is very helpful. Pokemon is generally in its character designs. They're very smart about how they, they edit their textures and their shapes to cover transitions. So for the rough around the neck, this is going to be um, like white fur. So I might think like polar bear. Just because it's a bird shape doesn't mean I can only use birds to build it. Right? And then for the legs, I mean, these are pretty much going to be bird claws, so talons. Trying to think of other things that might be useful. And then for this tail, this looks more mammalian, so it'd be maybe like a possum tail or something. Do you know that a possum is different than an opossum? I heard that. But I still know nothing more about them. <laughs> heard that they're different. And then for the wings, the wings, I think I want something more tropical, something colorful. So maybe probably a parrot. What about the body, the chest? So already I have five, right? And try to limit it to around not too many more than five. Because each decision uh, represents quite a bit of work. But for this chest and this body, I have to think, do I want to use, you know, probably the same parrot and use that chest? Okay, so this is my sketch. It tells me what kind of reference to look up. So my next step, I'll save that sketch, assignment two. My next step is to go to Google, go to Google Images, and start building references. But instead of looking at references to build my sketch, I use my sketch to determine what references I look for. So in assignment two, my references are going to be for a lizard head. That's going to be one folder. For polar bear rough at neck. For bear claws on wings. That doesn't mean I have to look for bears, but I'm going to start there. And I might end up using like um, like mole claws or beaver hands or something. Um, talons. So I'm thinking like bird of prey. And then for the tail, I wanted a possum tail. And then wings, wings and chest, a tropical parrot. OK, then I can just steal those exact terms, go to a Google image search, Put them in and then I'm going to limit with my tools to a size of eight megapixels or larger. Now just like there are a lot of, of uh, scenery photos online at large resolution, there's quite a few animal photos online but they're not always going to be exactly what you want but I'm loving this. It's beautiful. So as you find ones that you think are interesting, you right click and you say open link in new tab You right, right click and you say open image in new tab so you can see it at full resolution. You zoom in. You're going to see that the, the focus varies. So it's a beautiful photo, but it's very blurry because it's such a small parrot. But I might be able to use it for internal textures. Now remember, don't get too seduced by these other 
other selections because they might not be